guys, Dr. Gretchen here, physical therapist and multiple sclerosis certified specialist. One of these symptoms that my missing link members have the biggest issue with, rightfully so, is foot drop or drop foot or foot slap, foot drag. There's lots of different variations and it all stems from either weakness and or muscle tightness. There are lots of exercises that you can do to help counteract foot drop. And a lot of them are in my online MS wellness program, The Missing Link. However, today we're going to be focusing on stretches and massage to help reduce foot drop. If you're looking more for strengthening based exercises for your hip, your knee and your ankle to help reduce foot drop or improve your walking in general, definitely check out my online program, The Missing Link. These are also in The Missing Link, but I wanted to provide a glimpse at these exercises here for my YouTube channel. So let's get started. The first stretch that you can do to help counteract foot drop is a hamstring stretch. And the reason for this is because your hamstrings will bend your knee. That's its job. If your hamstrings are working correctly, they will help bend your knee. But you may or may not have noticed this already, it's much harder to lift your ankle up if your knee is really bent. Try it right now. Bend your knees back as far as you can and try to lift your toes up, either one side or, or both sides or the other side. It's really hard. Now, straighten your knees. So get your feet further away from you and now try to lift your toes. Generally speaking, it's much easier. So if you have muscle tightness or spasticity in your hamstrings, that is going to cause your knees to bend. And when your knees are bending, it's harder to lift your ankle, therefore causing foot drop. So let's stretch out those hamstrings. I like showing a hamstring stretch from this side so you can see what the exact angles are. And I like using my walking stick to help me get in the right position, especially if your legs are feeling fatigued or heavy today. So what you're going to do is straighten one leg out in front of you. If that's too hard for you to do today, get your cane or walking stick, slip it under your feet, lift with your arms and straighten that way. So this can be a really helpful tool. Once you're in that position, you can get rid of the walking stick. You're going to sit up tall and hinge forward with a flat back. Now it's really important that you're not rounding. If you're rounding, you're more likely to cause some low back discomfort or pain. So keep a flat back as you hinge forward. With a hamstring stretch, it doesn't really matter what you're doing with your ankle. Your ankle can be really high or touching the floor or anywhere in between. I wouldn't worry about it too much. You'll know you're doing this stretch correctly if you feel it on the back part of your hamstring. So that's anywhere from your butt down to the back of your knee. You will feel it wherever you are tightest. I personally feel this mostly behind my knee but I have some missing link members who mostly feel it in their middle of their thigh or closer up near their hips. Doesn't matter, anywhere in there is fair game. Of course, we always want to do every stretch on both sides. So once you're done with this side, if you were hinging forward, come back up, slouch to release the stretch. So you should feel little or no stretch at all and try your best not to use your hands as you bend your knee to bring it in. However, if that is too challenging, you do still have your walking stick here. You can lift with your arms to help you bend your knee and voila, you're in the right position. From here, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So straighten your leg, doesn't matter what your ankle is doing, sit up tall and hinge forward. And you should feel this similarly to the other side, but on the opposite leg, anywhere from the back of your hips down to the back of your knee and you'd hold this stretch. I have another video on my YouTube channel that explains the different types of stretching and how long you should be holding your stretches for. I'll attach that at the top of this video if you're interested. Once you're done stretching here, sit up tall, try your best not to use your hands as you pull your leg back in. Awesome job, we're done with our hamstring stretch. Next is going to be a calf stretch. This is where a walking stick or a dog leash or a bathrobe belt, anything that is not stretchy can be really helpful. 
It's kind of similar to a hamstring stretch, but this time we do focus on the ankle. So you're going to straighten this leg out just like you did for the hamstring stretch. Now we're going to use a strap, walking stick, whatever you have, and place it around the balls of your feet. Before you do anything down there, I don't want you pulling with your arms yet, first sit up tall. If you feel a stretch on the back of your lower leg, then this is all you need to do. Just simply place the cane where it is and sit up tall. If you don't feel the stretch, there's two things you can do. First, pull with your arms and you'll see your toes will come towards you. If you still need a more intense stretch, keep your arms in and pulling your foot towards you and sit up as tall as you can. You can even arch your spine a little bit, the low part of your spine, and finally, you can hinge forward. I have really tight calf muscles, so that's too intense for me, but those are the steps you can take to increase the stretch. Once you find a position that it feels like a good stretch for you, hold the stretch. You'll know you're doing this right if you feel it anywhere from the back of your knee all the way down to the back of your heel. Similar to the hamstring stretch, doesn't matter where you're feeling it as long as it's in that area. You will feel it wherever your body is tightest. As with the hamstring stretch, you can release the stretch and do your best to not use your hands as you pull your leg in. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So straighten your leg, use your, your cane or whatever prop you're using that's not stretchy. Wrap it around the balls of your feet. Sit up tall and pull towards you. If you need a more intense stretch, you can hinge. That's too intense for me, so I'm gonna back off. And again, you'll feel this anywhere on the back side of your lower leg. And it might feel different than your other side. That's okay. When you're done stretching, release the prop, try your best not to use your hands, and pull that leg back in. Another stretch that you can do to help reduce foot drop or drop foot is a stretch for your outer lower leg. This is a muscle group that can get really tight. Sometimes it's called the fibular or fibularis muscles. Other times it's called the peroneal muscles. Regardless, it's the muscles on the outer side of your calf. My favorite way to stretch these is actually not with a prop, but with your hands. So what you're going to do is get into a figure four position. So you're going to grab one leg. You can use your hands to pull your leg up. And from here, one hand keeps your leg on your opposite thigh so that the leg can be dead weight. It can fully relax. And your opposite hand pulls towards you. So it's almost like you're trying to see if you have gum on the bottom of your shoe, or you're trying to face the bottom of your foot up towards the ceiling. And when you do that, you should feel a light stretch on the outside of your calf muscle. Now, if you don't have tightness here, you might not feel anything at all, and that's okay too, but this is what that stretch would look like. When you're ready to come out of this stretch, release so that both hands are now on the lower leg and slowly lower that leg down. When you're ready, same thing on the other side. Go ahead and grab that leg. One hand stays on firmly so that this leg can be stationary and dead weight. And then the other hand pulls the ankle so that you're trying to look at the bottom of your foot. I'll show you from the front. This is what that stretch looks like from a front angle. So this arm is the one keeping the leg stationary, allowing this leg to be dead weight, and this hand pulls lightly. This should not cause any pain or discomfort. At most, it will just feel like a light stretch on the outside of your calf. Now, I said we were going to talk about massage today as well, so let's get into that. When your calf muscles or hamstring muscles or peroneal muscles or any muscle in your body is tight, stretching is just one of the things that you can do to release that tightness. Another thing is massage. The calf muscle and the outside of the calf muscles are a really great muscle group to massage and you can do it from anywhere in your home. So we're going to get back into that same position that we were just in to stretch our outer calf muscle. So use your hands to grab your leg and place it on the opposite low thigh. Now, this hand is going to stay where it is. It is anchoring your leg down to the opposite low thigh so that this leg is just dead weight. That's really, really important. 
if this leg is working, if it's actively working to try to stay in this position, the massage is not going to be effective. This leg should be fully relaxed. From here, you're going to use this hand to massage. So I'm gonna start with massaging my calf. I wanted to change positions because I use my thumb and you couldn't see that from the forward angle. So one hand stays down, this hand wraps around your calf. Now this is going to depend on how large or small your calf muscles are, but your fingertips go on the front of your shin and your thumb comes on the back and you're going to use your thumb to massage the, this part of your calf. And you can come up and down. I like to do little mini circles, but you can also do something like this. Whatever feels good to you, there's no right or wrong. This hand would be holding on. I'm just letting go so that you can see what my hand is doing. So this would be a calf massage. You can come over to the outside of your calf or the inside of your calf. You can even use your fingertips to get the peroneal muscles on the outside. So do whatever feels good for you. You can even use both hands if that feels better. Maybe you have one hand that's stronger than the other, but it should feel like it's releasing tension. So this is what it would look like to do a calf massage. And you're getting all parts of your calf from the back the inner edge and the outside of your calf. As always, you can do this on both sides. So you're going to get into that figure four position. Because this isn't a stretch, you do not need to be sitting up tall, but you do want one hand anchored down and the other hand is your massaging hand. This one I can tell is tighter than the other side for me. That's normal, you'll get to know which side is tighter, which parts of your calf muscles might be tighter. And again, it's important to release the tension of your calf muscles. We already talked about the importance of releasing the hamstring tension, but calf tension also can cause foot drop. Here's why. With our hamstring muscle, I explained that its job is to bend your knee, which makes lifting your toes really hard. The calf's job is to lift your heel up and bring your toes down. So the calf's job is to do this. Well, look what position that puts your ankle in. It puts it in a foot drop position where your toes are down. So if you're walking and your calf muscles are tight, it's going to pull your toes down and your heel up. And that's going to cause you to drag your foot or to place your toes down first before your heel and therefore have foot drop. So it's important that we stretch and massage and release the tension in our calf. I hope you found those exercises helpful. If you are in the missing link, please know that we have these stretches and massages in the program with a more in-depth video, including how long to stretch, when to do it, how to do it, all that good stuff. But I wanted to show you guys this reminder here today to give you something to do at home to counteract that foot drop without using strengthening exercises. If you want more information on the missing link, check out my comment section below. I will include a link with a video that shows you a behind the scenes video so you can see what the program is like. And I'll also include a Zoom link where you can sign up for a Zoom call with me. We can talk about the program. I'll show you the program and we'll see if it's a good fit for you or not. Thanks for tuning in.